Hello summoners and welcome to another episode of Pro Guides as Best Champions to Main, now in patch 1223. The champions we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We'll be starting things off in the top lane with Malphite. Malphite is one of the seven tanks being buffed on this patch, and if you look at his win rate, it makes sense. He doesn't look all that hot right now, but his stats are a bit misleading. His win rate is tanked heavily by people that build bad items on him, like Heartsteel or the AP Mythics. When we're talking about top Malphite, the only way to go is Gauntlet or Jack Show. With those, he's already doing pretty well this preseason, so he should feel really strong once this patch goes live. Before we go any further, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get on to our next pick. Maokai is another one of the tanks getting a buff this patch, and his are pretty big. His passive and Q are what made him such a busted top laner after his little revamp a few months ago, and those two things are getting buffed again. Like Malphite, Maokai is actually doing pretty well if you build him right already, so with his buffs, as well as the buff to Sunfire and nerf to Hydra, he should be a very strong pick this patch. You could even run Ignite on him, play to win lane, and snowball to be a super strong mid-game carry. The final top laner we have for you today is Rengar. Rengar has a bit of a learning curve on him, but once you put in the time, he's so, so worth it. He's by far the safest blind pick top laner in the game right now. He counters virtually everyone when you're good enough. Even Fiora, as broken as she is right now, loses more often than she wins against him. The only matchup that isn't good is Darius. Just ban him out and you're golden. One other thing that works in his favor is his super flexible itemization. You can shift your build to be way tankier with items like Gore Drinker, Death Stance, and Spirit Visage, allowing you to 5v5 if you'd rather do that over playing for picks. Taking a look now at the jungle, the first pick we have is Fiddlesticks. A lot of people thought Fiddle would be a lot weaker in this new jungle since he got rid of two camping, but they couldn't have been more wrong. He's still the best AP carry in the role and just one of the most elo inflating champions in the game, period. Farm your camps, ult when you have it, rinse and repeat. Most times, that's literally all it takes to pick up a win. Our second jungler is Vi. She is easily one of the most slept on champions of the last couple of years. Her performance is consistently between good and really good depending on the meta. She's another champion with a bit of flexibility to her build. Hail of Blades is the standard setup for big bursts when you catch someone out, but don't be afraid to try Lethal Tempo or Conqueror for better extended fighting, especially against tankier opponents. Our final jungler for today is Olaf. If you like a feast or famine all or nothing type of champion, he's the pick for you. He's one of the most snowbally picks in the game, and once you get rolling, it's pretty hard for the other team to stop you. One tip I'll give is to only ever team fight if you have Ghost Up. It makes a massive difference in how well you're able to keep your ultimate up in fights. Now for the mid lane. The first pick we have is Pantheon. He's a very dominant laner with virtually no matchups being bad for him. If your foe disrespects your damage and moves up too far, you can very quickly punish them with some hard hitting trades. With his point and click stun and high damage, it's super easy to work with a jungler to get kills both in your lane and if you go for roams. Be sure to communicate and look for plays with him. If you'd rather a more passive scaling approach to the game, then maybe a Nivea would be more your speed. Pre-6, you just take the last hits you can get and trade when it's not risky to do so. But once you have your ultimate as well as Lost Chapter and Tier, you pretty much eliminate any need to interact for the rest of the lane. Just clear waves, shove your foe to their turret, and scale for free. Anivia's lack of interaction can make for a pretty boring laning phase, but it also brings very consistent results. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What are some other champions that are considered boring or non-interactive, but bring in consistent results? Let us know down in the comment section below. Now, let's get back to the video. The final mid laner we have is Akshan. 
He's a pretty good mix of everything. He's got strong laning with good roaming skills early, he scales nicely with the DPS of a marksman, and he plays the dual role of assassin, easily picking lone targets in the mid and late game. If all of that isn't enough, let's not forget his broken ability to casually revive his fallen allies in teamfights. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have is Kog'Ma. With tanks being buffed pretty heavily this patch, having a reliable tank breaker is pretty important, and Kog reigns supreme in that department. Vayne exists too, but we usually recommend Kog over Vayne because it's a lot easier to come online with Kog. His trading in lane is much better, and honestly for a scaling champion it's kinda dumb how good he is in lane. As long as you fight around his W's cooldown, you're as much of a lane bully as anyone else. The second AD we have for today is Ash. She's just a super well-rounded pick that is always good to play, regardless of the meta. Even at her weakest, the utility she brings is unmatched. Her E is basically blue trinket on a way, way shorter cooldown, and her ability to make picks and engage fights with her ult always goes well with any comp. But she's not just a utility bot, Ash also pumps out some serious damage with the Kraken build. That, along with the slow on her autos, makes her well suited by kiting opponents and shredding them before they can even touch you. Orb walking is an important skill to have for AD carry mains in general, but it's especially important for Ash. The final bot lane carry for today is Karthus. If you're tired of losing 2v2s because your support plays it wrong, any of the mage picks bot lane are great alternatives. All of them have one thing in common. They're really good at neutralizing the lane one way or another. In Karthus's case, he has really good wave clear and will easily shove anyone in. The only option an opposing bot lane has to stop him is to try to force a fight on him, but that basically never goes well. Even if they kill you, you're all but guaranteed to return at least one kill in your passive. But totally ignoring Karthus also has its problems. With his obscene scaling, no enemy bot lane is going to win the just farm it out agreement. To round things out with our supports, the first pick we have is Janna. New season, same old bot lane meta. Janna continues to be one of if not the very best pick in the role. The thing is, there's not a really realistic solution to fixing Janna without giving her a big overhaul. Aside from her shielding and healing, being strong in fights, her ability to disrupt foes is insane. Between her Q and ultimate, it's next to impossible for divers to actually touch the backline against a good Janna. And yes, there is such a thing as a good Janna. A good Janna actively looks to make plays and block foes, while average ones sit in the back of a fight, shielding allies and going for lazy ultimates. The second support to consider picking up is Renata Glask. This is another champion that is always going to be a good one to main simply because her kit is so insanely broken. While she's technically considered an enchanter, when you play her, she feels a lot more active than the average healer or shielder. Really, her enchanter side is more of an afterthought. The majority of Miss Glaska's use comes from her W and her ultimate. Those two abilities give more turning power than should ever be allowed on one champion's kit. Finishing off our list, we've got Brand. Sometimes, the best option for supporting is to not support at all. Well, not traditionally anyways. Mage champions like Brand provide plenty of support just in a different way. With their extra pushing power and huge pressure in lane due to their poke, mage champions make it easier for an AD carry to safely farm up. And by being an extra damage threat, you're giving your opponents another target to worry about. And even if they do go on you, as long as you get your full combo off, you'll still do a ton of damage and set up your allies to win the fight. And that is it for our top 3 champions to main on 1223. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what the most uninteractive champions are down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.